There's a walkout basement, and with a walkout basement, it always means one thing for pond builders, that there's a giant slope to work with. And there's every bit of an eight foot slope sitting here. So we get this big- I can make it look like 20 if yep. I if I do this. Here, go like this. Every inch is a foot. Yep. It's at least a 37 foot slope. <laughs> <laughs> but there's gonna be this amazing stone staircase coming down. When we get to do the stone stairs integrated with the waterfall, it looks so, so good. The goal is just let's have a good time today. But that's a lesson to our viewers out there. Set your bar high. Set your bar high. Or Aspire it, to be great. Or set it really low <laughs> and then surprise the <laughs> shit out of yourself later <laughs> in the day. What is up everybody out there? It's Chris from Team Aquascape as well as Dan and we are out here today at the start of a beautiful Pondless Waterfall project. We've got both our trucks with us. We've got our excavator and dingo down there. We've got the product and our job trailer. So we are ready to roll. Let's go ahead and kick it over to Brian and he'll give you the walkthrough. The product is off the truck and now the man, the myth, the legend, the brilliant mind Hunter is now here. <laughs> old, I think it's old school. Where doosh, doosh, doosh. Doosh. Oh, Frank the Tank. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, you know, we just lost a guy because he said he woke up thinking about work. He went to bed thinking about work. At work, he was hopefully thinking about work. This thing kept me awake last night because I am super, super excited. And to me, that's a good thing when you start dreaming about what you're gonna build. This is a project that started, the idea of it started almost a year ago. And now we're finally out here building this. They got this house. There was wood deck that was up here. It was all falling apart. That got ripped off. We had Tom from Rose Landscaping come out, do a patio late last fall, I think it was his last project of the year. They got that in for us so then we could bring our stuff up to it. But what I think I'm most excited about is there's a walkout basement and with a walkout basement, it always means one thing for pond builders, that there's a giant slope to work with. And there's every bit of an eight foot slope sitting here. So we get this big- I can make it look like 20 if yep. I if I do this. Here, go like this. Every inch is a foot. Yep. It's at least a 37 foot slope. <laughs> <laughs> but there's gonna be this amazing stone staircase coming down. When we get to do the stone stairs integrated with the waterfall, it looks so, so good. So we're gonna get stone stairs coming down to some kind of small little seating area in the middle. Some place in here, there'll be a bridge that comes over. I think there'll be another bridge that has to bring us back to this area. We're doing a crushed stone, like kind of fire pit area off over in here. We got choice, choice weather limestone coming in. We're actually using the stuff from the sandbox that Chris suing tag for the sandbox so we know they're incredible pieces. But today's goal is to get the aqua blocks down in here. We always want to start with our reservoir down below. I think it's something like a 1500 gallon system here, kind of lay out where that bonfire crushed stone patio pit's going to be. The grass is tax season and they're both tax accountants and they've neglected the grass because there's just no time and the grass is slowly driving me insane. So before we do anything, I think I'm going to mow their lawn for them real quick. So yeah, you guys work on some other stuff and I'll go cut the grass. Chris. Brian. This is going to take forever. They need like a tractor, right? <laughs> <laughs> they cut this. Here's what I'm thinking. Because so much of this space from here over is gonna get destroyed anyways, and we need to create this massive berm, why don't we just take the machine, scrape all this grass, and then we'll cut what's left over there. We'll just bury all this stuff. I'll ride my tractor down. All right. You know, towards the end of the project, then we'll cut the grass for, but yeah, that was uh, probably gonna be a little more labor intensive than. The front, like I started on the front yard, and I think the mower died three times in the front, so. I will give you credit, and for those of you out there, he cuts very straight lines. It's almost like. Like, I don't do, I do designs. Like <laughs> everybody can do straight lines. Like no, I do like yin yang signs. <laughs> yin yang. <laughs> Best customers ever are the ones that bring you bagels and water and everything. <laughs> so for those of you out there wanting to have work done by Team Aquascape, you know the drill. So we're already kind of starting to adapt the design a little bit. One of the <laughs> cilantro. <laughs> it's cilantro. Cilantro. <laughs> <laughs> so originally we were having a walkway that came from up there, kind of came down and crisscrossed and over here. We were gonna keep that walkway a lot tighter to the water feature itself. Now we're gonna bring that down. 
I want that walkway to come all the way out around the excavator, come down more through here, creating a little bit more mystery. Like I want to leave from the water feature for a second. If this all gets planted up in here, like I'm picturing like big trees and really thick, then when you come around this corner, you're going to discover these other great looking waterfalls coming over and through here. We'll have this bridge right in this section that'll lead us over to the fire pit patio face. This is obviously going to be the money shot as we look up that way as everything gets created. With that said, we've had to change the configuration of our reservoir a little bit. We have 30 aqua blocks, so instead of going six by five with the aqua blocks, we're gonna keep it really tight and go three feet, three, three aqua blocks wide, 10 long, keeping this really narrow. But with a 25 foot wide liner, I can still kind of create some different pools and effects rather than looking like a trough. A bunch of words help, I guess, but you won't understand until I think we start actually digging it. So the next thing to do is actually lay out these aqua blocks, get our infrastructure in the ground here, aqua blocks, liner, fabric, pump vault, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of figure it out from there. <laughs> why don't you kind of kind of kind of just explain real quick one of the other reasons why we decided not to go with like a six by five block footprint and you chose the three by ten well originally we we're gonna come out here with that reservoir and as I start digging out in this space it's really gonna limit access for all of our stone we want to utilize this entire space over in here for the three semi load stone so if I started digging a big giant hole right here all of our stone would have to be staged up over in here and I don't want that to happen because then we'd have to drive back and forth and back and forth Having all that stone staged under an area where grass is hard to grow anyways makes a lot more sense. All of this is going to get ripped up and planted and mulched. Eventually, I'd like them to landscape all this so this is kind of hidden so the public pathway next to the DuPage River over here doesn't become such an enticing thing over, over in here. So it's, it's, just, it's <laughs> access, right? Your design is evolving based on site challenges, access, what it's going to do to the efficiency of the project, that kind of stuff. So I think that's an important thing for all the viewers out there to understand um, that you just have to be willing to adapt and hope overcome cilantro and achieve <laughs> let's go have a bake first boulder only let's see 10 20 30 30 more pallets to go all right rocks are starting to show up like you said we're reusing a lot of the rocks from the sandbox studio which we knew we would bring out to this job and they're really awesome like check out this rock I love the natural high spot in the middle. Little low spot there, low spot there. 100% we'll use that for a waterfall somewhere. Love this rock. Probably one of my favorites. It's just so cool. And all of this is being used up in here. You can see Chris and Daniel pulling the aqua blocks back out. We just dug the hole, made sure everything fits. Always want to put them back in to make sure that they fit before you put that fabric and liner in. We figured out where our pump vault's going to go, which is right in here. So the next step is to dig that out. I think I'll do that. And uh, we might go grab some sand. I think we grabbed the sand today, right? Yeah! <laughs> so we're gonna put some sand down. We'll use the sand to backfill around this thing with a river back over in there. We definitely wanna make sure we have a sand backfill all the way around. That way if hydrostatic pressure, water gets underneath this liner for some weird reason, because that river, you know, got the 100 year flood or something. Look at our rock coming from like a mile away. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Anyways, back to this. So we put a sand backfill all the way around. That way if water, it takes the path of least resistance, which is up through that vein of sand and then back out this way. I'm moving right along. Should definitely get this reservoir of our done today. Got it. We've got our 30 aqua blocks in, nice long and narrow. Someplace right in there is where the bridge is gonna come over that'll lead to the fire pit over in there. I know it's gotta be so hard to visualize what the heck I'm talking about. Maybe if I come way up on the top, you can see it a little better. Pathway comes right in through here. There'll be a bridge someplace in here. Waterfall and stream then carry this way, drop like this, kind of into the corner over in here. We'll want to pull that back as far as we can. The more I can pull it back, the more it's going to be visible from a window over there. But pull it back, drop here. As that water drops this way and continues to move like that, this pathway will come around this way and then a bridge over it right in here, leading to then the fire pit patio, which sits kind of over in this space. Now you can see it, right? Well, it's lunchtime. We've gotten a ton done for the three of us. 30 aqua blocks in. We're going to backfill everything after lunch. And then we're actually going to start setting some boulders. So we're moving along pretty good in the pond world. I think we like to say almost there. But... Chris, it's 
80 Degrees as the first like big project we're doing of the year. I think it's the first project that we sold from last year. First rock, first time the machine's been out at a job site, first time. It's the first time for a lot of things, but let's keep the viewers in suspense, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday we got all of our aqua blocks in, pump vault in, we got the liner down. Come on, Daniel, up here. You don't stop, Daniel. <laughs> don't stop. It's the first time Daniel is moving. First rock for the waterfall. We're gonna start moving up into here. I think our, I would love to say what our goal is, but every time we say our goal, we never get quite there. So the goal is just let's have a good time today. But that's a lesson to our viewers out there. Set your bar bar high, set your bar high, or aspire it, to be great. Or set it really low <laughs> and then surprise the shit out of yourself later <laughs> in the day. All right, so Brian, this is gonna be that spill stone for the bottom coming into the reservoir and then we're just gonna kind of work off of that. We've got, you know, these bridge pieces that are gonna come down across the basin down and through here. So you can see the reservoir is completely in. We've got fabric liner, fabric peeled back. So now it's just up to the design process and kind of knowing which rocks are gonna go where. It's like chest now. Start with the bottom waterfall in here. The reason I want to start with that bottom waterfall is because it's going to kind of help dictate the shape of how the bridge and the stepping stones are going to move across over to this area here. What I wouldn't want to do is start building the bridge and everything else, the stepping stones moving across this area, and then find that I don't have enough real estate to actually build my waterfall correct. Way more important for me to get the waterfall looking to its fullest potential and then adapt the stone steps to move across. Because look at how much real estate I have. Look at how much real estate I have to play around with those stone steps coming across. So I wouldn't want to put the stone steps here and then find out that my bridge is way too close to the waterfall. So that's the goal, kind of get a lot of this buttoned up, get some of those stone steps in here. If you come over here, you can see we brought in a bunch of our base material. We love working with Illinois brick. They put all this stuff in super sacks for us, so it's super easy to just strap up and move over and we can dump and manipulate these things a whole lot easier. So much easier than just shoveling gravel off the, the driveway or off of a tarp someplace out there. Just keeps our job site nice and neat. Hopefully we get to use those today. So we've got it three quarter clean. There's no fines in this. This is what we're gonna use as the base for our steps as we're kind of working our way back up through that kind of organic staircase pathway that's gonna meander throughout the water feature. Yeah, kind of crisscross over. I think we got it at least two times. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. So Dan's just prepping his kind of landing pad and then we're gonna start setting all these rocks. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can see behind me, they just set one of the last racks over on the right hand side over here. Every place else you see the liner, we're either gonna do like little washes or gravel or like small little cobbles and landslides and stuff. But I think this is why it's so important to oversize your liner. Technically, we only needed a 15 by 20 foot liner to cover our aqua block footprint down there, but we would have been left with really no extra liner, which would have really handcuffed us to creativity. Because we have so much extra liner, we're allowed to bring this rock out out further and really expand the area here. If you can see this, I don't ever want to see this rectangular shape that was left with the aqua box. By being able to swing the liner out, it allows us to swing our steps out further, allows us to bring the rocks out a little bit further and be endlessly creative. There's nothing worse than being handcuffed to creativity because the liner says you have to stop. <laughs> Chris is broken free. So we're pretty much wrapped up on this side. Remember where Daniel's sitting in the machine is gonna be a fire pit area. So that'll lead into this. We'll have a little pathway that comes from here over to there you'll get to come across this now we're gonna start working on the stairs that are gonna come up and around here then up into there with the waterfalls coming down in between it all 